Welcome back to Leave It on the Dance Floor. You want it, part two. Brady and Trisha. She's here, the first dance mom to sit in on the podcast, Leave It on the Dance Floor. Here we go. Welcome, Trisha. Thank you for being here. And uh, how's Miami? Miami is great. Miami is probably the best place for me to live because there's always something to do. Miami's great. I, I there's something love to Miami. do. I just, I love the weather. I love the people. I love the food. No complaints. There's here. everything. There's everything. everything. I mean, what you can't complain about Miami. And now your husband and you and just your little guy. And Bodie. Home. Yep. Us, we're at, we're at home by ourselves. Brady's gone. And so is Bennett. So, so her, uh, just his older son lives in Orlando and he's a bio we're gonna mess this up Brady what is it he's a biomedical science something yes he wants to do research he has a biomedical microbiology degree wow he's very smart very smart yes good because he has a brother that's a dancer and he might need to pay his rent someday <laughs> just throwing that out there I'm just throwing that out there all right Bennett just letting you know that's how it's gonna work you know, they traipsed him around all over the world. And then Brady's going to get him into all the shows. Well, he, yeah, he probably doesn't really care want to go to the show. Okay. <laughs> and then, he's over it by now. And then he's Bodie over. is at home and he's 13. He's 13. I, junior high. He's, gonna, he's going into eighth grade. And um, it's crazy how fast time flies. Like, seriously, it's just nuts. When he went to school this year and I looked at him and he got tall and he just doesn't look like a, you know, he lost that baby face. He doesn't mm. look like a little kid anymore. And his and his voice is pretty deep too. It's kind of bizarre. now. Do you do the PTA and the no. all the stuff, baking cupcakes, no. helping? No. no, no. I'm the one that if you want to go out for a cocktail afterwards, I'll go with you. Oh, we're go yeah, we're going for cocktails after this <laughs> recording. You, you heard guys. it. You heard it. And where can everybody follow you on your Instagram? Oh, my Instagram is still the same at Dance Mom Trisha. At Dance Mom Trisha, and you can see these fabulous restaurant she goes to and the cocktails and the food <laughs> and it's the fun <laughs> it's art it's like art though I'm, Where all, you go. I'm all about the fun all about the fun which is why i didn't do so good on the show we're all gonna have fun <laughs> well regardless because it uh, wasn't very fun <laughs> no i mean i bet i i will say that although it took a minute for the producers to get you to your limit you delivered you, you delivered. delivered when but you when the you, only unfortunately, disappointment when you that I had is you didn't throw that cake on one of them. You were you were a good person and you just were raised correctly and you just couldn't you threw the cake. But Let's not talk on about someone. the cake, Trisha. So tell us all. So I wasn't gonna throw it at anybody. That's just not me. She was gonna say Stacy there for a minute. No. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean my thought was I was actually gonna throw it straight up in the air and where so it lands it, no because remember how all of our um our mirrors i was like on the end and their mirrors were like this so i was hoping if i threw it up in the middle and it came down and hit it would like splatter all over the oh place. but i couldn't get my hands quick enough underneath that's why i was trying to talk so slow like i, I just i couldn't do it and i was shaking and, and i was trying to just toss in the middle so it went over everybody but so was that production did they tell you to do that? They brought you the cake. They, well, they said they brought you the cake. They obviously want you to throw it at someone, but my God, what would have happened if you threw it at like a mom? I'm or, glad it like, wasn't what, me. What would have what happened? What if it was me? Oh, Did you want to gosh. throw it at me? No, you would have. You would have. You would have been out the door quicker than I could run over there. <laughs> <laughs> zooming in the chair. Zooming. Right? <laughs> yeah, we're zooming. I wouldn't have had the chance, and the whole cake would have been ruined. But no. So uh, did we get to eat the cake? The kids remember. did off the floor. How they do you did, forget that? Ate, I, yeah. That's what I thought. How I thought I think that? the kids ate the <laughs> It ate was the all cake. over their face. Yeah, yeah we just it. wanted to eat it. So that was it. And you went home. And we went home. And did you, were you allowed to tell people that you went home? Was there any limitations put on you by production? I hate that I'm going to even say this, but I really don't remember. I don't think I was supposed to tell anybody. I think we, we knew we, we couldn't talk about it. I went home and I don't think I... We even left the house for a week. No, right? We were just kind of both in shock, and I was tired, and I was like, "Like, what the heck just happened? This is crazy." Um, yeah, I, I didn't tell anybody. I mean, obviously, my family knew, but. And then, when you were called back to come on, they didn't tell you when you left. You're coming back in a week. 
No. I don't know how it happened. What? We were in we were in Pittsburgh for like the promo shoot. They didn't the tell us till we were, yeah because. And then Ryan was like, oh, you can stay. So we, really, we didn't you know. You can stay if you want to. We better. didn't know. We didn't know. Well, he, you know, he had. I don't remember. Did he ever really talk? He didn't. When we were home, I mean, I, I think it was always presumed that maybe we would get to come back, but it was never like they were even thinking about it because, you know, they're try- trying to make me feel bad that I was, you know, like terrible at this, but, um, which I, I, I knew he was coming back. I don't, that's strange. <laughs> that which, they which didn't. I didn't know because now it makes sense. I mean, looking back at it now, obviously you're going to want me to feel like that because then I'll be more upset when I come. Like, it yeah. makes sense yes. now. Well, but I, in the moment, I was just like, really? Like, that's kind of crazy, but whatever. And I think that you, like, Brady was painted to be the new Maddie, kind of. So in in hindsight, I'm sure you were looked at as the new Melissa, but you didn't have any, like, family drama or anything going on. So that's where they probably, like, because, yeah, I mean, Melissa number didn't. Number three and all that. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Melissa, no disrespect, Melissa didn't really bring much to the table other than her kids being great. You know, for Cameron, Maddie was awesome, but Melissa really didn't have much story. One, because she kept it to herself. And then it was. Well, also, when you lie that much, <laughs> you have to be really smart yeah. to remember who you told what but, lie to. Yeah, so Trisha doesn't lie. <laughs> and when they said that Brady was not coming back, I think you. It struck a nerve. It, it, it definitely did. And after. Also, she just watched those two performances. Oh, well, no. No, no, we knew was, we was, had to go yeah. through the. I think that's what made it the hardest is we had to go through the whole week knowing we were leaving. Oh yeah, I mean, and you didn't think at the very end I would have said, "No, screw you, mothers, Brady staying. You can all leave." No, because I don't. No, because I, because I, I, I know this is a game, and I don't think they would really have allowed you to do that. I think it's more drama the way. Yeah, that they did. I mean, looking back at it now, in the yes. moment, you don't you don't think clearly. You're just like reacting, or in my case, sometimes trying not to react on purpose because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you don't want to open the door for you know the floodgates. More, more exactly. Like for me, there's just so much that I can take, and I get to my limit because I'm not. I mean, like I said, I just my personality is different. I like to have fun. You know, I can speak up when I have to, but I just that's just not my personality. Like you really do have to push me, but when I get mad, I get mad. I mean, Abby basically said that, you know, the all the mothers were jealous of a 14-year-old boy. So, I mean, were you, would you say that that was story or what like what do you okay, think so about the whole reality? Doing my job. The whole reality exactly. aspect. Like that that's where it becomes confusing because I think, you know, all the kids were close, you know, I think the moms are my friends and I, you know, believe that, but I also know that it is reality TV and they're going to have to do things to push us all to get us to react, you know, or no one's going to want to watch. It's going to be boring. Mm. And I get it for me. Sometimes I'm very guarded because I'm careful not to get to that moment. You know, I don't want to say Flip something out. that right. I shouldn't, um, especially know like I would never, and my whole biggest thing is I never wanted to do or say anything that could potentially affect Brady in his career or, and, and it's, it's very hard to figure out in the moment, oh my gosh, like, because of course we're all mama bears. We want to protect our kids and we yeah. want to speak up for them, but there has to be, you know, there's a limit. And for me, I felt like I was more guarded in that respect just because it takes, I don't know, it just not really guarded. It just takes me more, I think, to get mad than other people. So I don't know, but it was a complete shock. And um, I, I still, I mean, I don't know whether or not they were jealous of Brady or not jealous of Brady. The thing that really got me upset was, and I probably why I reacted the way I did when I finally got really mad. Um, in, in past seasons, I feel like if a cast member was sent home, the other moms and everyone would rally around them and, you know, try and come to, mm-hmm. and that didn't happen at all. So I think that's what, push me to react because then I felt like okay if you don't like me or what I'm doing don't it's getting taken out on him and he's done a great job and he's a good kid and a good dancer so I think that's I mean they got me that's Mm. you know it pushed my buttons but and I saw I mean there's one part where you both like hold hands just because I think it just got too crazy well yes but also I'm not defending any mother please I would never do that but I think it came as such a shock for them to all run over and hug Brady I think everyone was dumbfound. 
everyone but no it, you can't they just were say like no and and but when we had the ch- the chance in, in the moment yeah, yeah in the yeah. moment we were all in shock i'm not saying that but even like an hour as, later or as the week went on do you know what i'm saying it was still yes. kind of like oh they're going home like maybe everyone thought it wasn't going to happen i've thought about that too yeah i'm not complaining about it i'm not mad it is what it is it's tv but that was at the moment why i think i got as mad as i did that, all right that was why. so let's leave it on that the dance floor why. let's leave it on the dance floor rank the mothers oh, that were boy. on the show with you <laughs> on the pyramid <laughs> We can do it either way. We can do the nicest one to you on the top, or we can do the, the <laughs> most evil on the top and work your way down. Do you see Brady's telling me no? <laughs> Come not, on. Rank not a good well. idea. They're all going to sit here. And not gonna, a, they're okay. Gonna go rank Let's, you. I'll rank. I don't care. Let them rank me. I'm going to rank them based on who would I who I would think would go have a cocktail. There you go. Okay. That's, great. That's wonderful. Okay. Very all fair. Right. So wait, we need to call this something. You know, it's a pyramid of, of champagne glasses. You know when they put them and they yeah. and it ro- the drips down into the glasses? Cocktail hour? I don't know. Let's... Here's the funny thing. I, I, fe- I feel like... I Cocktail feel... carousel? I don't what's know. What's the pyramid? No. What, what's a pee drink? It starts with a pee. Prosecco. Prosecco pyramid. And Here we go. And when we, fir- okay. and when we, and when we first... Um, when we first, you know, started filming, you know, Prosecco and... You know, Cosmos and lemon drops are my favorite drinks. And so I kind of, you know, introduced Prosecco to a few of the moms who had never had it before. Oh, perfect. They, so they, the might, they might not, you know, admit that they've drank yeah. Prosecco while we were, you know. With the, actually, we never drank when we were filming, but afterwards. So you guys yeah, never drank. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, so season eight, you guys never drank while you were filming. No, okay. absolutely it not. No, no. Interesting, because... And Previous I, cast members the, say differently for the, I, the I only. Know, but then they left alcohol in my studio while we were out of town for the com- competition for the weekend. We had rehearsal at the studio, a big rehearsal. Kids came from a school for a musical rehearsal or something in my studio. The office door was wide open and wow. there was the alcohol laying on the floor. Any one of those kids could have taken it, stole it, got drunk, died, whatever. always get emails and direct messages online from kids and parents asking if I can record a short video. Wishing someone a happy birthday, a milestone congratulations on a special achievement, or even just my advice before performing at a competition. With Cameo, my followers, the ALDC elites, have the chance to connect with me directly. Looking to have Abby Lee's last word as you enter an exciting moment of your life maybe put you your friend or a special someone at the top of the pyramid or do you want them at the very bottom anything is possible on cameo connect with me from anywhere on the globe at cameo.com backslash the real abby lee that's cameo.com backslash the real abby lee the sky's the limit on cameo anyway the pers- they, well actually yeah. the only they they had us try drinking one episode where we were somewhere and they brought us to a bar remember and had us drinking yeah, but not that- sitting upstairs in my studio with oh the, no with no, the no. Cup in no hand. we would never do that boom there okay. you go so the pers- class of people yes yeah, so the prosecco well pyramid. i'm not saying that i'm just i mean i never I even thought oh, okay oh, i yeah. never thought about that actually i mean it would have been uh, probably would have gone the time would have Gone by maybe <laughs> maybe you would have given the producers what they wanted. Yeah, maybe that's what they should. Maybe have that's done what you were they missing. They should have given me prosecco in my water. You bottle. just cracked the code. So rank, <laughs> do the prosecco here. Oh, I don't even know. Like, or just say a couple moms that you'd go on. out. I would. Go I out. would. I would definitely like to drink prosecco with Ashley. Yes. And Anne. Mm. Wait, who's Ashley? Presley's mom. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I think of Bryn's mom, and I'm like, wait, he wasn't there with Yes, Bryn. multiple Ashley. Okay, Ashley and Abby, Anne. you want me to do the Prosecco Pyramid, and you can't remember the lady's name? Yeah, yeah I can't. Go ahead. The world does. <laughs> Have you been drinking Prosecco no. in that glass right now? No, no. Maybe there's vodka in your water bottle. H2O. <laughs> Tequila. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, maybe we should have, you know, season 14, and the only stipulation is you have to drink the Prosecco while you're sitting upstairs. And I bet you that would be a great show. Okay. More people would sign up. Probably. Okay, so who's on top? Oh, she's not going to let me get on out of here. <laughs> Ashley, then Anne, no. then no, who else? No, no, no. They're all on the same level. And everyone, I'm just, 
Oh, oh no, I'm, I'm just saying I would give more Prosecco to Ashley because she would definitely drink more. Okay. She's fine, though. She's fine. Every, they're all fun. Well. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's, we're not let's, going. let's move on. We're not move on. We're, we're, yeah. So yeah. we're all going to drink out of the pr big Prosecco bottle one day. We're, so when yeah. your husband, Bye, yeah. when you told your husband you got the TV show, he knew about it, obviously. He knew about past experiences. He knew about uh, stars doing a Miami spinoff. Correct. So now you get it. We have to go to Pittsburgh. So how did that affect your family life? Your, you know, you finally moved to Miami. You're all there as a family for Brady. He's dancing. Your husband has a good job. And now it's like, oh, see ya. I'm going again. They were, they were, you know, basically by the time, you know, we moved to Pittsburgh, you know, everyone was on board. It, it was a little shocking at first because I don't think we really thought we were going to get it. But um, they were used to it. They had done it already. So. It they was, handled the boys were yeah, fine. Yeah, I mean they were fine. They were older at this point. So and it was only I think six months. It wasn't that long. And your and your husband has to run everywhere. And and yeah. Or did you have like a nanny or something? No, I don't have a nanny. I wish. I don't even have a house cleaner. I need one. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, I think everybody at home would agree. It's like nobody cleans your house better than yourself. Like I feel like well, you that's know, true too. Yeah, and, but, and my biggest thing is even when I thought about getting someone in to help me. I feel like I have to clean it before they come anyway. Everybody yeah. feels that way. Right? Yeah. Every, you have to like tidy. So I, I'm like, I do what's it. What's the point? I do it in the hotel when the housekeeper's coming I in. I'm like too. trying to move oh, everything. Oh my god, I do too. Because I, I don't want them to walk in and be like, "Oh, these people are, you know, yes. slobs." So, yeah. So because they know you from TV. <laughs> how did it feel getting to Pittsburgh, seeing the infamous Abby Lee Dance Company? It, it was. It, I mean, it was. Had you been there before? You just went to the LA studio, right? We had never been there before, have we? No, we had just been to the LA studio before. I mean, it was kind of cool. I mean, it's iconic. I mean, I'm going to say it. it's an iconic place. You know, being a dance mom, you always think, you know, am I ever going to get to go sit upstairs? I mean, I never thought I would. But. It was a mess, though, that was running. Yeah, they, she had paint all over the walls. Yeah. <laughs> it was disgusting. But And it was cold. I just remember it was freezing. Yes. Freezing. Yes. And we almost didn't make it the first day because there was a blizzard. Oh. Yeah, it, it was fun times. Fun times. No hot bars, no boats pulling up nope. outside freezing. to the bar. The heat's freezing not working. cold. The, yes. We're working long hours. Very different than Miami. So think about my mother. 18 years having a studio in Miami. Oh. Her kids working at the Fontainebleau with Sammy Davis Jr. and Elvis and the Rat Pack and everybody. And then marrying my dad and moving to Pittsburgh. Yeah, I don't know. She, she, she hated it every minute of her life. She was a good every woman. Minute. I would have been like, let's move back to Miami. Uh -huh. Miami's great. Well, my dad wanted to move to Miami, but she didn't want him to give up the job with the railroad. You have a little boy at home, Bennett, and then you have Brady. And then we have Bodie. But did, did Bodie, Br Brady started dancing before Bodie was born, or were you expecting, or how did that work? Um, I had just had... I had just had Bodie. Bodie was six weeks old when um, Sean got deployed to Iraq. And then we were moving um, to Fort Hood, Texas, and I was trying to, before Sean left, get all the kids set up with all their, you know, after school activities and get a schedule going. And then Brady was a really, you know, he loved gymnastics. He was a really good gymnast. So I was going to, you know, sign him up for gymnastics. And in then, Texas? In Texas. Where you were moving. Okay. And then he was just like, oh, I want to take a dance class. And I'm like, you do? I'm like... Okay, so I signed him up for, for acro, thinking that's what he meant because he's probably seen acro classes before. Right. And that's kind of how it started. So you found a studio in Texas near the home that you, you bought, that you moved to, and then it was on base. You had to live on base? No, we yeah. were, because we, uh, I've lived in Texas twice. That point, we were, we were living on your own. On, you on get our to own. go get your own house. And I was signing up for him for gymnastics, and he decided he wanted to take a dance class and they had dance classes at the gym that he was going to. Oh, okay. So did he did gymnastics as well and took a dance class, like in a little room off Correct. the gym. That's how it works. Yes, that's right. how it works. And yes. that's how he got started. And the teacher said, Whoa, after this kid is good. I think it was the second, maybe after the second class, the teacher came out and, you know, I said, where's Brady's mom? And I thought, oh gosh, what did he do? You know, he got in trouble. <laughs> and, the second week. And, and she was like, um, you know, I don't know how to tell you this, but, you know, I used to be a ballet dancer and a ballet teacher, and he's just natu a natural. He's a natural wow. dancer. I was like, really? And she's like, yeah. So that's kind of how it started. She's like, you know, I want to try and put him on my competition team, and let's see how it goes. And then the rest was history. He just, 
He did both for a while, and it was really hard because um, he couldn't, you know, spend the time training in both disciplines. It was too long. So when we moved to Miami, then he just stopped competing in gymnastics. But you moved to Miami to go to a dance studio. Yes, to go to Stars. And your your family, you moved with Brady. Yes, Brady and I. Like people move to L.A. for their kid to be on a sitcom or, or try to be. Correct. Whatever. Correct. Um, Victor and Angel wanted Brady to come down and take a class and see how he likes stars. And I was kind of like, okay, well, come. But, you know, we just moved here. You know, we just bought a house. Our intention was to stay in North Carolina. Sean was the ROTC commander um, in Greenville, and he was going to retire, and we were going to stay there. You know, we thought this is a great place to retire. It is, and a great place to raise children yep. and a nice environment. So right. we bought a house, and two months later, um, Victor convinced me to drive down to Stars to take a dance class, and we got in my little minivan, packed a suitcase, and never went back. Wow. The rest is history. Wow. Yeah. And you're still there. You yeah. love Miami. I love Miami. So when did you get your husband and your other kids out of North Carolina? Two years. He oh. had to He had to stay. Um, he actually ended up having to retire, so he had to stay there for two years to finish that assignment, and then they moved down to Miami with us. So it was a lot of back and forth for the first two years. Um, we did our best. You know, in the beginning, I drove home almost every weekend. So your husband and wife, and you look at each other and say, we have to do this. Like, there's no question. There was no question. Make it work. He, you know, and Sean was on board from the beginning. He was very supportive. And I think because we were a military family, um, you have to be very flexible. You have to adapt. You to move your around a lot. It, right, it, right, it, right. It's just kind of, it, it was, it was kind of like, okay, we're, this is what we're going to do. Like, he has this talent and we don't really know what to do with it. So. And we trust these people and. They know how to train boys. You know, they're going to help us. And. You went for I it. I went for it. Yeah. And it, I mean, there were a lot of nights where I would cry. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like, it was hard. Like, what am I doing? You know, we're here. I still have two young kids at home. My husband's trying to make, you know, trying to be mom and dad. Um, it was tough, but we, we got through it. And they've always been really, really supportive. That's wonderful. Yeah. Like I told you, though, the two other boys, wait. Wait, you'll be paying for the Abby. weddings. You'll be paying. No, I just mean like the weddings or the this, or they're going to buy a house. They're going to say, hey, you know all those dance lessons you paid for? Uh, that's a down payment on a house. <laughs> so. Give me a check, Mom. Millions of kids go to bed hungry each night in the U.S. So when I found out about a nonprofit that feeds 5,000 underserved children each night named Katarina's Club, headed by Chef Bruno Serrato, I knew I had to help. After all, who knows kids better than me? He launched Katarina's Club when he found out about California's motel kids. These children are so poor that their entire families live in single-room motels with no kitchens, nowhere to cook, no dinner, so food was a rarity for many of these families. He has been feeding kids, 5,000 kids, every single night since 2005. He even mortgaged his home twice to keep the program going. When his restaurant, Anaheim White House, burned to the ground, he found another kitchen that same day to keep feeding kids without interruption. He has served well over 10 million meals. We are looking for any size donations. After all, a $5 donation feeds a family of four. While food banks are helping ease the crisis, many of these children, often referred to as motel kids, live in cheap, crime-ridden units that do not contain kitchens. Since these families are unable to cook dinner, they depend on already prepared meals like those provided by Katarina's Club. To become involved and make a donation, go to katarinasclub.org backslash donate. Again, that's katarinasclub.org backslash donate. Trisha, I have to ask for oh, our listeners. Here we go. Where are the Gucci sunglasses? Do you oh, have them? They I do. Need, you do. They need to be framed. They need to be auctioned. Like a shadow so box so the, or something. The, the funny thing is I have a ton of sunglasses. Okay. Which lives in Miami. And, and those yeah. are still my favorites. And um, at one point I thought I had lost them. <gasps> yes. 
Scary. And I got really, really upset. And then I found them. <gasps> so now I'm careful yeah. not to really use them because mm -hmm. I don't want to ever lose them. No, those those are just iconic. So yes. tell our listeners but why. I, I want to tell something. So yeah. I lost. You remember that fur? It was like a faux fur. Faux fur. It wasn't real. Cape with the big fox call, fox hood. I yes. wore it into one episode. Yes. Gone. <gasps> Gone. Where'd you lose that? I don't think I lost it. Just oh. saying. Next, the white purse going to Baskin <gasps> Robbins. The white Louis Vuitton. Gone. It's almost like a, an initiation. You, I remember you get, when you bought that purse. Yeah, you get something really gorgeous. You I get it on. It, or not, you wear it on TV, yeah. and then you lose it. It got its it got its moment on TV, and then it's like, up, oh, sorry, Abby, you don't get a to have it anymore. Great watch. I know it's crazy. But it's just gone missing. So, Trisha, tell our listeners why you decided to wear those sunglasses when you came in the next day. Was Do it... I have to have a reason? Yes. Well, no. Sunglasses. I mean, was it because you were crying or was it because you were just like, I'm so sick of these people. I don't even want to look at them. Like, be honest. What was the reason? I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah, pink I was, eye. I was. No. The funny thing is everyone thought it was because I was hungover. <laughs> No, I didn't think that. I was like, no. Because she was hungover every other day. She no, came I she was not. <laughs> no, I was, I was mad. Obviously, I was upset. And I was, if anyone, I don't know if you guys know who Victor Smalley is. He's Brady's dance teacher. Yes. I was channeling my inner Victor that day. Yes. When Victor gets mad and upset, he sticks on or he's in the you know, bad mood. He sticks on the sunglasses. And I'm like, you know what? I'm putting on the sunglasses today. That was iconic. And I didn't want to look at anybody. No other mother in all I of Dance just... Moms did that. You were the only, can you believe, you were the only dance mom to think to That's wear, hard to believe I was the only dance that, mom. I, I, that, no would came, that came in to shoot upstairs, just sunglasses on, and it had the Gucci on. It was just <laughs> everything, everything. Yeah, like I'm the gays I'm loved. surprised they didn't make me take them off, but I probably would well, have put they, up a fight. Well, I think you could think. They, they were like, oh, this is too good. She's yeah, finally yeah, delivering. She's giving I us what we putting want. putting the sunglasses on. I didn't want to look at anybody. I was upset, and I was mad, and... I was channeling my inner Victor that day. At one point in the episode, I thought it was hysterical. You said, send the rest of them home. Find six <laughs> more Brady's. <laughs> so was oh, that... Oh, I thought you were talking about the moms. Well... Did I say that? You did. I, send I, the well, rest of them home. Like the kids and the moms. Like oh. just get rid of the moms. Maybe the editing though. Who knows? Maybe you actually meant the moms and they made it seem like you were talking about the kids. I don't know. I was so mad. I just... I was Beetlejuice that's a great that day. Line. You were, it was a great line. It was it was great. So I mean, listen, it was worth the five episode wait. I think I think it's pretty fair to <laughs> that say that wasn't one of my finest finest moments though. No. Oh, in television, it was your finest moment. <laughs> yeah. It was. So yes. having if the cake had hit somebody, <laughs> that would have been the finest moment. But because it went on the floor, that it was the sunglasses. Did you think of the line? The moms had their cake and they're eating it. Too. Did you think of that or they told you to say that? No, I thought of that. Good. There you go. That was like in the moment. Like, I mean, good. Per it was, Abby? that was great. I was like, I was like, don't act crazy. <laughs> so, you were saying that to yourself? Yes, I was trying to See, like, I've never said that to myself. Viewers. Well. I have never said to myself, don't act crazy. I have said to myself, I am so livid. I am dumping out this whole purse because I cannot find such and such or I, I'm, Fed up. I'm not going to have people touch me in the audience from behind anymore. I'm out of here. No. Yeah. I try to channel my inner crazy when all possible. Like, I don't try to let it out there. And I'm sure, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's why. the difference yeah. between yeah. us. There, yeah, you, there go. you go. Right there. Uh, right there. So I think you left a lot out on the dance floor. I'm happy <laughs> that you came on. I'm, you know. Yes, this is, this is a great surprise. No, wait. Yes. wait I have more questions. Go oh, ahead. No. Go ahead and ask. I was going to. Hold on. Let me see what time it is. Yeah, I know. Because We're we have okay. a dinner reservation. Okay. All right. So Everybody. we can't so miss cocktail, cocktail hour. No, All right, we can't so wait, miss wait, cocktail wait, wait, wait. hour. I was trying to find out something. So your son is here. He's living in New York City. He's living his, I've, he's I've dreamed living of living his best in New York City. life in New York City. Yes. And so you moved him into the dorm. We moved him in How today. was that? Just like your son going to college? Yeah. Same experience. Same. Same experience. He's no emotion, no tears, no. No, because he's. It's like he's done it before. At this point, it's you know, the normal. I actually wanted him to get back because he's you know ready to get going again. And curfew. Do they have a curfew at this place? Not no. Not when you're over eighteen. Not when you're over eighteen. No, no. curfew. Good for you. So so what about <laughs> so what about? Does anything about the city scare you? Uh, about him being here on his own, or just the city in general? No, 
I'm, I'm from New York. You know, I, I grew up in Queens. Oh, I didn't know what? that. Yeah. That's why we that's why we've always yeah. been on the you same know, page. You know, when you this, came this, in and sat in that chair and you spoke, I thought she sounds like she's from New York. Yeah. I originally I'm that. from New York, yeah. Okay. Makes so much sense. Yeah, I mean the city doesn't scare me. I mean, no. obviously I don't like him wandering around at night by himself if he ever does that. Do you but ever that's do that? in any city. I don't think you do that. Do you do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's Other in than any that, city. Yeah. in the beginning I was worried about him being able to do his own laundry and cook for himself. But, you know, he's he's done really well. I'm proud of him. So in this dorm, they don't have any of that. They have their own kitchen. He has a little kitchenette. And then downstairs, they have, like, a huge industrial kitchen. That everybody can use. That everyone can use. Yeah. Nice. Washer, dryer in the dorm or no? Yes. Oh, On his wh- floor, there's a gym. Yeah. He's Great. All, he's got everything he needs. He's all set up. That's it's, what sold and me. And you didn't have to write a checkout. I didn't Hallelujah. There you Hallelujah. go. <laughs> Thank God. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So, Trisha, what was your favorite moments, you know, seeing your son on television? television? Like, what was your favorite thing to see him either perform, you know, a moment that you look back on and you're like, this is why I did this? Definitely his um, swan song solo, Mm -hmm. I think, was my favorite moment because I thought, you know, after everything he's been through this week, he went out there and nailed it. Nailed it. Right. And nobody's going to touch him. If you, they didn't really go in on my face and stuff, but I was like, this is, he just did, he it, that, just proved himself. And that whole week, even with, you know, that was the hardest group piece for mm-hmm. him. Because for him. For he, him. He was all different. Know, everything he did was different. Everything. Than that. And I, I, I think I was so proud of him, even though we were, you know, going home and everything else had happened that week, you know, um, I was, I was so, I was so proud of him because he did it, you know, and he really, I mean, he just, he killed it. He, I don't know, he did a great job. Now, the decision to go to ballet school and leave his studio and his peers that he grew up with and competed with, and you guys again, uh, did he come to you and say that? Or did he show you the email and said, it's time? Or you knew? I knew. I mean, we, we knew the time was coming and, you know, I've always said it's, you know, Brady, it's on you and your terms. You know, when you're ready to go, you know, everyone, you know, there are people that, you know, kind of wanted him to go earlier and thought maybe, you know, it was time for him to go. Some ballet people. And um, (laughs) I just knew, you know, he was still getting the training that he needed, you know, both from, you know, Victor and Angel at Stars and from his, you know, ballet teacher, Magali. You know, he, he was getting what he needed. So I left it up to him, like when you're ready to go and you know the time's right. I always said, don't let people pressure you. This is your life, this is your decision. And you know, when he got the email, it was after we were here, he was in um, a Twyla Tharp show. And- Oh, wasn't that supposed to go to Broadway? Yes, wait a minute. T- what was the name, tell me that. Twyla Now. Yeah, but I thought, I wanted to see that. And I didn't get up here to see that. I don't know where I was. But I remember hearing about it, and Brady was in it, and it was a big deal here in the city. Savannah what? Savannah, Savannah right. was in it. Right. He had, you know, traveled. We had traveled the summer before. He, you know, visited a couple places, um, potential schools. And, for ballet. For ballet. Okay. And like San Francisco or, or, or Boston or around the country. Correct. Okay. And he... Um, was in the show and then you know it was during that period of time where he's like I I just think I'm meant to be in New York this is what I want to do this is where I want to be you know and then we went home and Christmas and then it just kind of worked out he got the email and he was gone in January you can make it here you can make it anywhere Mm -hmm. when you're ready you're ready you know yeah and And it's so nice though that you're originally from New York and he found he was actually born in New York he was born at West Point really look at that you're you're born and raised West Point is Trisha got a good guy. <laughs> Trisha got a good guy. I, want to, I like a man in uniform. Tell your husband that. But See, Abby said she likes a man in uniform. Trisha, oh, I'm going to tell him that, all right? <laughs> I, I have to say uh, my favorite moment of you on the show was the last episode when you guys did the prom and you opened up about your son. About Bennett. Yes. And, you know, just obviously as a member of the community, I thought that that was very special that you shared that. So just... Thank you. It was very nice. And you were very honest. And I think that it was something that a lot of mothers that maybe were watching needed to hear. And that was totally, you know, 
I didn't see that coming the organic. moment or you know yeah. it was just very organic and I think that's probably what you know made it so special too is it was it was real yeah and, as, and as reality TV isn't always real and mm. what what happened when Bennett watched the episode oh my gosh I don't want to say I don't remember but it was so long after that. Well, if you don't remember, then I guess that's a good no, thing. No, it was a good thing. I <laughs> yeah. mean, it was all, we I mean, I had already when I kind of got an idea that's where it was going. I mean, I spoke to him first to make sure. Oh, you did. Great. Okay. You know, okay. and before anything went, like he, you know, I wanted to make sure he was okay with everything and he was, obviously. Um, but yeah, that was that was probably one of the highlights too. I think that as Brady, you know, said last week, that week was just very special for everybody. Yeah, it and was. It, wouldn't it have been nice if they at the conclusion when we're all in the dressing room fighting said season 8B starts you guys have they would have, you guys have two months they would have kept the chemistry going but i think like we said with brady just it felt very fulfilled all you know bitter bittersweet it should have continued but i think also like just you all had such a great experience too you know right highs and lows but it, yeah. all in all it the came kids, together yeah and they meet people that and you're in such close quarters with them and it's like being thrown into a tour doing right. a national tour and he said that when he was on the show last week about how going when we went to Europe and when he was going on the buses it prepared him for being on tour with the ballet company right I it's mean just, it's it's real life that's what you know if you want to be a dancer that's what it's all about and it's also you know even the same you know every week when you're teaching the choreography and they have to learn it so quickly and they have to be able to perform it that's real life that's what professional dancers do sometimes you know, you have to film for someone and, and you might not even have time to rehearse it. You have to watch a video or something, you know, so right, that's just, right. I think it really did help prepare him for this, you know, point of his, point of his life. So now what's, uh, what's next? Where do you see Brady five years? Um, I said, um, I'm going to get yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> at least you knew, they at know. least you knew, you <laughs> learned yeah. something. What? What did he say? I said it so many times. Um, oh, um. Okay. No, ahead. you're good. I didn't think you said you're, it at all. You're Brady. Abby's thought, not going <laughs> to yell at you. I thought you spoke very well, and you thought first before you used your words, and you used great vocabulary. I thought it was yes. good. Yeah. Your mother is another story. <laughs> it's because I haven't had a cocktail yet. Yes. Okay. Okay. Fifteen minutes. Yes. <laughs> we got to hurry up. Yes. No, I changed it to 7.15. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm always thinking ahead. Brady <laughs> Brady has, you know, had the chance over the last few years since we did the show to travel a lot and visit, you know, a lot of different countries. And I just see his life, you know, being fulfilled that way. He's dancing. Hopefully he'll make it to the main company, ABT, and just continue to travel the world and dance. You know, there's still some stages he hasn't danced on that he wants to, and hopefully he'll make it there someday. Right. Uh. And then, right. Down the street. <laughs> and right is, down the street. It's Broadway. Yep. There you go. And you never know. You never That's know. That's why I voice want lessons. You to stay on him, I know. Please, please. Voice lessons. You got to do voice <laughs> lessons. Okay. So just stay on him about that. <laughs> I will. Okay. And talk to whoever you can with ABT or if there's a like a supervisor, counselor, whatever, see whatever you can do because I would like to have him as my sidekick sitting next to me in one of these episodes of season nine. The competition begins. Okay. We'll see what we can do. Yes. That'd be yes. great. But just sit and laugh and chitter chatter and that's <laughs> it. He doesn't really have to say anything. This but year. Trisha, this wasn't that bad, right? No, this wasn't, fun. this wasn't that bad. Yes. And this thank you. This is much easier than filming a reality TV I show. I bet. With yes. people who you know are going to make you not good in the edit. I know. Yes. That's the thing. We got you back, Out to Trisha. get you. You have to be nice to me. Yes. yes. <laughs> thank you for being the first mom. You are the first, first mom. mom. Yes. On leaving on the dance floor. Yes. And Thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you for listening. Here we have Trisha Farrar. And uh, tonight, she left it all on the dance floor. Yes. Except that Prosecco pyramid. Yeah, We're going to work Prosecco on that. <laughs> Everybody at home listening, if you're in the car, if you're traveling, if you're working out. Oh, I don't know if you're working out. But whatever. You rank the moms from season eight on the Prosecco pyramid. Ooh, we might need to do an Instagram poll. You do it and write yeah. it. All right, thank you all, and until next time, straighten your legs, point your feet, and all that jazz. ALDC Elites, thank you so very much for listening. Be sure to subscribe and give Leave It On The Dance Floor a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
if you want to watch each week and see exclusive behind the scenes content like my never seen before pictures and videos from the competitions, some even taken from the wings, classes at the ALDC studio in Pittsburgh, or even our iconic dance concerts, head over to Patreon or become a member on YouTube Premium, linked in the show notes each week. See you on the flip side.